This is the second part of the MATLAB relational operator sequence. In this video, we'll do more examples of using relational operators. In the last video, we compared two scalars and two arrays. Now let's compare a scalar to an array. If one operand is a scalar and the other is an array, the scalar is compared with every element in the array. In this case, A is compared to every element in B. We get a 1 by 5 logical array because B is a 1 by 5 row vector. The first element of the output vector is 0 because 3 is not less than 2. The other four elements of the output array are 1 because 3 is less than the other four elements in B. Now we're comparing the scalar 3 to each element in our C matrix. We get a 2 by 2 matrix of logical zeros. It's 2 by 2 because C is size 2 by 2. The entries are all 0 because none of the elements in C equal A. When comparing a scalar to an array, you can think of the scalar as an equally sized array containing just that scalar value. For example, in this statement, you can consider A to be a 2 by 2 matrix of just the number 3. Scalars and arrays are the only unequally sized elements that can be compared. You cannot compare B to C because they are both arrays of differing dimensions. We can chain multiple relational operators in a single command. This command involves two relational operators, the less than and the not equals. MATLAB evaluates the standard arithmetic operators first, then the relational operators. After the arithmetic operators are evaluated, then the entire command is read from left to right. First, MATLAB evaluates 2 times 3, which is 6. Then, MATLAB evaluates 3 plus 4, which is 7. Next, MATLAB evaluates if 6 is less than 7, which is true, so the output of this statement is 1. Finally, MATLAB checks if that 1 is not equal to 4, which is true, so the final answer is our logical 1. This can be very confusing if you have multiple relational operators, so please use parentheses to improve your code's readability. The second line is a much cleaner way of writing the first line. It's easier to see which commands will be performed in what order. For the last example, I'm going to show you some dangers of using the equality operator. In general, I would avoid checking equality as much as possible. While two numbers may ostensibly seem equal, they can contain round-off or truncation errors due to the way computers represent numbers in binary. Common sense tells us that A and B are equal. The workspace even indicates that A and B look equal. However, A and B contain slight differences many decimal places back, so they are technically unequal, hence the logical zero. Instead of checking equality, I would check if the difference is less than a very small tolerance. This line checks if the difference between a and b is less than or equal to 1 e negative 8 or 1 times 10 to the negative 8. The answer is a logical 1, so this tells us a and b are the same to at least 8 decimals. This is the approach I always recommend when testing for equality. And that's the end of this demo. 
I hope you learned something new and can apply relational operators in your own codes.